video we're going to take a look at iteration, more specifically we're going to look at for loops and this is for algorithms and programming for IGCSE computer science. So first things first, what is iteration? So the definition that you need to know for your exam board is iteration is a concept of repeating a sequence of instructions until an exit condition is met. In other words, it's a loop. It's where we keep doing something until it needs to stop. And that's usually through some kind of condition. So we've got a count control loop. So that's what a for loop is. That's where we loop a set number of times. We've then got a precondition loop and a post condition loop. So a controlled count loop or a count control loop is our for loop. And that's where we repeat a section of code a set number of times. So you can repeat it once, twice, 10 times, million times, it's up to you. But we should only use this when we know how many times it needs to loop. So it might be a case of uh, a piece of code is going to loop three times and then if they're unsuccessful, it's going to lock them out or something like that. You then got your precondition loop, so that's usually a while loop. And this repeats a section of code until a condition is true. So it's a little bit like an if statement. So it could be whilst continue equals yes. So this is where we don't know how many times the program is going to run, how many times it's going to loop. And it might even be a case of that piece of code might not ever loop. So it might be a case of, you ask a question like, do you want to play the game? If you type no, so whilst uh, answer is not equal to no, so if you type in no, it would ignore that piece of code and just stop or do something else. Whereas if you typed in yes, it would jump into the loop and keep looping and playing the game or whatever. You've then got a post condition loop, which is a repeat until or a do while loop. And this repeats section of code again until the condition is met. So it's almost identical to a while loop, except for this will run the code at least once. So it'll run through a piece of code, then check what the um, condition is. So it might be a case of, uh, if it was a case of the game, a game idea, it would run through the game and then say, do you want to continue? And if continues, yes, you'll carry on playing. If not, it'll stop. So it'll run through the game at least once. Think about when you put in your passwords, if you get it wrong, it keeps looping until you get the password right. And it might have some form of count control loop, so you can only do it so many times. But you have to type in your password and press enter and try and log in at least once before the loop starts. So that would be more of a repeat until loop if you're logging in. So there's a flow chart of a for loop. So as we've said, it's an example of a count control loop. So we know how many times a sequence of code will be executed. So let's say, for example, we're starting uh, i0. So here, I said i. Now it doesn't have to be i, that is just the name of a variable. You'll see later on when we create a variable, we need to set an identifier, a name for that variable. Most programmers, it's just like a known practice to call the identifier in a for loop i. It stands for index. You don't have to use that. You could, you know, call it bananas if you wanted to but the common thing is to use I. So out of habit, it's what I learned when I was at university, what I learned at school. So it's a habit that I still do now. So you've got, is I less than 10? If it is, we're gonna do a piece of code and then we're gonna increment I by one or by something. It doesn't have to be by one, you'll see that in a moment, but if we're counting from one to 10 or looping 10 times, we'll increment by one. So I is now equal to one, because it's at zero. Is it less than 10? Well, one's still less than 10, so we'll do something again. And then we'll increment to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it'll get to 10 and then it'll stop. And then it'll say it's 10 essentially, because I'll be 10 at this point. Less than 10, no it's not. And it'll continue with the program. So how we write this in pseudocode, we do for identifier, arrow, the starting value, to the end value. So it could be for counter or for I, arrow zero to 10. So that would do the uh, sort of basic for loop that I had on the last page. And then you might have for identifier, so for i arrow zero to 10, and then step five. And what that would do is, instead of incrementing by one, it'll increment by five. So for example, if you're doing a for loop that is a uh, zero to 10 again, but you're setting by five, it's going to do start on zero, 
then you open until it's five, then go around again, and it'd be ten, and then it stops, so it'd loop three times rather than ten times. So here's some examples, there's four examples of how we can use a for loop. So we've got basic for x or for i equals zero to ten. We can then say, if you wanted to, set the starting value to 10 and then go down to zero by stepping by minus one. So that's going to do like a countdown. We can then do a zero to 10 again, but step by two. So we'll obviously have fewer loops because we're incrementing by two instead of one. And then we can also use our own inputs. We could say, how many times do you want to loop the program? Store it as a variable, we've asked the user. And then we can loop how many times the user stated, which is what this one is here. And I've now got some examples of the typical outputs for each of these. So we've got this first one here, so 4i equals 0 to 10, and then it's going to print out i's value. So it starts with 0, then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. And then you've got this one here that's stepping by 5, so like I said before, it goes to 0, then 5, then 10. And then this one counts down, so 10 to 0, so it's like the opposite of this one. And this one is where I've got a variable, just like normal, that I've set to 10 and then that's what I've chosen and it's looped that many times. So this is how we do the code in Visual Basic and what the output would look like. So now I've got a little piece of pseudo code. Now there's nothing syntactically wrong with it. I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out the mistake. So pause the video now. So hopefully you have figured out what the mistake was and you'll see that it's this piece of code here. Now what I've done is I've declared the variable total inside the for loop. So what this means is every time that the um, uh, piece of code loops, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of adding to this total like it wants to, so it wants to have like a running count of whatever the user's typing in, it's going to take the input, so say I typed in 10, and add that to 0, so the added output 10. It's then going to start again, it's going to take whatever's in total and replace it with zero, then ask you to do it again. And what this will happen um, is that it will constantly say, you enter five, it'll say five, you enter 10, it'll say 10, you enter 12, it'll say 12, but it'll never actually add those numbers up and that's the mistake. Now, if I just very quickly, just flick to Visual Studio where I've got some Visual Basic, what I mean by this is you might have a variable, so I might say, um, let's go 4i equals 0 to 10. So let's go what Visual Studio is I add in next. Obviously in pseudocode you would write end4 instead of next. And then I might say uh, dim total as real, oh, as double, which is a, it's still a real value, it's just you can't use the word real in Visual Basic. Um, but a double is just a decimal value, so I've got a zero there, and then I can say um, total equals total plus console.readline, which is how you get a user input, and then console.writeline is how we'd output it. And I'll just do this as well, just so you can see where the loop ends. So if I run this now, and I type in 10, you see it says 10 and it ends that first iteration. And then type in 50, and it says 50, then 70. You see it's just repeating what I'm saying because it's doing zero plus whatever I've typed in. However, if I move this dim total as double, to here, I run it again, and I type in 10, then 20, then 50, then 20, then 400, you see it's actually doing a running total, because we declared the variable once, and then we are just constantly adding to that same variable, rather than resetting it every time. So hopefully you understood count control loops, or count control iteration, or for loops and you know, that was really clear you understood it and hopefully i will see you in the next video where we're going to take a look at while loops and then we'll look at do while loops and i'll see you in the next video